what's going on guys my name is Ben how are you guys doing today what I have for you today in this video is I'm gonna give you an app review of Copilot for your iOS device and most likely you'll probably be using this on your iPhone but you can also use it on your iPad as well if you got the cellular version with the GPS sensor built in now what is this app Copilot is an offline GPS app and actually let me just launch it right here this is the icon right here and basically you do not need an internet connection all you have to do is download the application and uh, download the maps that you need or that you want and then let it download and that's it the maps are stored directly on your phone and you know you are going to get updates like i recently got an update for this application basically they updated what's out there on the road you know what stores have closed what stores haven't closed uh, you know things like that and i've used this app two years ago when i used to drive a car that i did not have a gps navigation in and you know at some point i stopped using this app because i knew where i was going every day but for those of you guys that have an old car or that has a car with no gps navigation built in you know you can definitely give this app a try you know even if you don't have a, a portable gps device like the ones from garmin with the dash cam at the back and i'm just making sure that this thing's not falling so we are in the car right now and i'm going to give you guys an overview of this application so excuse the glare that you see in the background i mean i am in a sunny background right now but you can also use this in portrait mode as well but i'm not going to tilt it up because I got the cable plugged in through USB when I set the GPS route I want you guys to be able to hear what they're saying uh, because the iPhone 5 speaker is too low yeah, you guys won't be able to hear anything so I'm gonna hit this button right here and you got a few different buttons right here you have the search button so you can search for points of interest or if you know the uh, address you can definitely type that in directly and then of course I have the button right here to where I can set to go home and then this one right here you, you can do more searches on places and then you have your favorites button right there which will show up all the addresses that you had set as a favorite all right and you know you can search online for places you, you can go into your contacts and you have addresses <laughs> program into your contacts the coordinates current location so now you can see where you are currently I'm just in the parking lot right now so I'm gonna hit the arrow to go back and you know the red dot right there is my current location so if I hit that you know it'll tell me where I am currently and basically I can get more information about where I'm at you know nearest town and then of course yeah you have a little digital speedometer over there and uh, I'm not moving right now Oh, but it says like less than five miles per hour so it's accurate because I'm at zero right now and heading so it tells me what direction I'm in so I'm currently facing the south right now uh, uh, which is pretty cool now to be true that I am not on an internet connection you guys know that my iPhone 5 I am not on a contract plan no sim at the top and I'm not tethering through my Galaxy Note 4 through mobile hotspot or anything like that nope so this is true offline GPS over here and I download the whole North America uh, map right here so I can use this throughout the whole United States Alaska Hawaii and uh, even Puerto Rico and I did use this when I went on vacation this year uh, back in the summer to California uh, to uh, when we were traveling and you know this thing has helped out a lot now if you don't have the cable plugged in it is going to drain battery life but uh, you know normally I, I would treat this like if I had a portable GPS device uh, because normally I would plug the cable in which I have in this case so let's actually take a look at how this application works so I'm gonna set a route over here and I don't know the address off the top of my head so I'm gonna go to search places all right and nearby yep and I'm gonna search for my local target right here And let's see if it picked it up and you hit that plus button right there to set your destination and then of course you have the map right here so it gives you a guide uh, of where your destination is going to be at and how you're going to get there 
All right, so let's start the route. And then of course it pops up this message, you know, unsafe to do this uh, while driving. So that's kind of like how your built-in GPS in your uh, car, if it has it built in, you know, is like. Okay, so I got the route set. Turn left on Connecticut 10 South, Queen Street. Okay, gonna make a left right here. A lot of traffic this morning for eight o'clock in the morning. <laughs> okay, so for this destination that we're going to right now, is gonna be uh, taken by the highway. Uh, just going to my local Lowe's store right here, the Lowe's Home Improvement Store, which there was a Target nearby over there. And of course, you can see that it tells me how much of a distance I have left before my next turn or my next exit. And it gives me an overview of my guideline. All right. So we're going to make a right over here. Okay. Turn right on ramp to I-84 West. Yankee Expressway. I do apologize if the camera is going to be shaking a little bit. I don't have a very stable position in the vehicle right now with this tripod, but I kept it as tight as I can. All right, and 0.1 miles. Get 229 North, West Street. All right, and it tells me uh, what exit that I had to take just now, and it shows me how, how many miles I got left. And as you can see on the bottom right here, it tells me what my next, uh, what my next turn or my next exit is supposed to be. So in this case, you know, my next exit is um, exit 31. One mile ahead, take exit 31 to Connecticut 229 North, West Street. And plus, notice how when I'm on the highway, it shows me, okay, what my exit sign is supposed to look like, and it tells me which lane to stay in. So I got three l different lanes over here, and it wants me to stay all the way to the right. You can see by that yellow arrow highlighted, and it changed the view to like how the road's gonna look with that exit over there. And of course, I can exit out if I wanted to, but I got 0.5 miles left before I get there. So we're just cruising. Only three right miles now. ahead. Take exit 31 to Connecticut 229 North, West Street. Okay, here comes our exit right here. So I'm going to take it. Take exit 31 to Connecticut 229 North, West Street. And you know what? I'm not, I'm supposed to make a right right here, but I'm going to make a left to show you that it recalculates. And then we're just going to go about the turning around. Keep right. Keep right on Connecticut 229 North, West Street, then turn left. All right, just add a traffic light here. Okay, now I'm gonna go left. As you can see, we just made a wrong turn. 0.2 miles ahead, turn left on Hart Street. Okay, so it wants me to make a left turn onto the street right here. Which I know the area pretty well. Turn so. left on Hart Street. Yep. I know the area pretty well, so I'm pretty familiar with where my streets are at. But if you're in an area where you're not 100% sure what the area is like and where all the roads are, you possible chances you might be coming through some wrong turns. Turn right on Ridgewood Road. Okay, so I'm gonna make a right right here because we're gonna turn around. 0.2 miles ahead, turn right on Holly Hill Drive. Okay. I mean, this app was very useful when uh, I used to drive a car that had no GPS capabilities whatsoever. Turn right on Holly Hill Drive. And believe it or not, I still find it useful. I mean, the only thing is sometimes when you're trying to look up 
a point, a, a certain, a particular points of interest, you're not able to find three miles ahead. Turn left on Hart Street. Like, for instance, like I tried to find my uh, local target, but I wasn't able to pick it up through the points of interest just now. That's why you might have seen a chop in this video. So what I did was uh, I scrolled down on the map and, you know, pick, uh, pick the spot where my local target was at. I hit it and it popped out Lowe's Home Improvement. So I'm like, okay, let's go over there because that's the same Turn destination on anyway. Street. The only thing that I'm, I don't like so far uh, about this application is like when you're doing a U-turn like this, see that uh, X has blue markings over there, you know, over here. That should have gone away. I mean, that's how like standard GPS applications in cars operate. You know, in this case, this one, it doesn't remove that excess highlighting that uh, I just went through. But since I'm going back on the same route anyway, for that particular route, it's fine because that's how I'm able to get Take to my lows. To Connecticut 229 but, North, West Street. you know, I'm not going back uh, on that little U-turn anymore. So it should have just unhighlighted. on Executives Boulevard South. Okay, I have to switch lanes here. But yeah, you know, as you can see, it's gonna show me, okay, how, uh, how much of a distance I have left before I make my next turn. And low Turn right left here. on Executives Boulevard South. Lowe's is right here. And if you want, you know, with the iPhone's multi-touch display, you can uh, zoom in as well. Now, as you can see, I just moved my screen a little bit. And... 0.3 miles to Lowe's Home Improvement. I hit this arrow right here, and it brings me back to my, um, where my vehicle is currently at. All right, so we're coming up on our Lowe's here. Four hundred feet to Lowe's Home Improvement. Approaching Lowe's Home Improvement. All right, and as you can see, here we are, and it lets me know. Now, in terms of this application, from what I've seen on like modern GPS devices these days, and uh, oh, you have the two buttons right here to restart navigation, or you can save like where your car is currently at. Uh, and you know, to save car location, I would say that's most likely for like uh, when you're trying to save your parking spot. Because this app, you know, from the last time I used it, uh, a, a year ago or so, there was a button for me to save where my car is currently parked. So in case if I was in a big parking lot or something and I forgot where I parked my car, you know, if I had my phone on me in my pocket, pull it out, open this application and just um, locate where the car was parked at. But you know, in this case, we're not gonna do anything like that. So I'm gonna exit out. And there you go. And you know, one thing I noticed about this application compared to when I used it la uh, a year ago was that even if I reached my destination, the route would, the navigation would still keep going and it would not stop. Even if I arrived at my destination, then as soon as I start pulling away from it, then it acts like, okay, navigation was still resumed. And basically tell me to the directions to get back over there. But this time it acts like a traditional GPS unit inside a car where once you reach your destination, that's it. You're done and it's ready for your next route. So as you can see, that's just a quick demonstration of how you know, this application works. I really do love this thing. And this is available for both iOS and Android. I mean, it was a paid application, not gonna lie, but I, t I tell you what, it was very cheap at the time. I think I bought it for like seven bucks or something. And I think it's definitely gone down in the price right now, but definitely uh, uh, worth giving it a try. And I'm gonna leave a down link in the description below because there is a free trial version and I did try it 
Uh, the only thing that I wasn't able to get was voice guidance for GPS. But here's the thing. Just by looking at the free trial, just by seeing how it worked without the voice guidance, I'm like, I know this is a great application. I'm going to need it uh, when I start going to school uh, after I graduated high school. And, you know, I'm going to need something uh, to guide me on where I need to go in, in case I get lost because I'm not going to have a mobile phone until I actually start getting out there into the public all the time. And now that I am, uh, you know, I got a mobile phone which is the Galaxy Note 4, but I also have the same application for my Note 4. But as you can see, it works great on the iPhone 5, and you got the uh, the 6S Plus or the 7 Plus. Uh, you know, basically, I iPhone 6 and up, it's going to work even better because you got the bigger screen real estate. I mean, three and a, a four a four inch screen right here on the iPhone 5 was not too bad, but I first started using this application on the iPhone 4, believe it or not. And it worked gr uh, great back then. It was just a little sluggish, but the iPhone 5 uh, it got even better. And I know with the 7 Plus or the 7, 6S, whatever you guys are using, uh, you know, it's going to be even better. And one thing I want to note is that as you're driving, you may see these little icons right here. These are basically like the points of interest right here. So as you can see, you know, Lowe's Home Improvement. But I can also tap on the road to see where that is exactly and what street that is and what town that's in. And of course I can hit the arrow, go back to my current location. So I mean, on a one to five scale, I give this a solid four. Uh, the only thing that I would knock it off on so far is not enough points of interest support, but that's why you would have the address. And you know, I feel like Copilot, all they have to do is just roll that out and an update, you know, to fix that issue. And uh, as far as the highlighting feature, uh, the highlighter route, once you uh, start going through your route, I'd say it should just unhighlight uh, whatever I just passed. And as you can see, I just made that little circle turn right there just by making a right, and then I made another right turn, and then I made a curve right, but it still kept the old route that was highlighted that I already went through. And me personally, I feel like that should have just gone away just like any other GPS application. And if you have music stored on your iPhone right here, you can play the music while you're uh, using this GPS app right here. And when it needs to speak to you, it's going to lower down the volume of the music and turn up the volume uh, of the voice guidance so you can hear where you have to go. That way, you, know, you are guaranteed to not miss a turn. But other than that, not every GPS application is 100% reliable because there's always going to be some mishaps here and there. Like there was actually one time where... I was told to make a left turn onto a street, but that was a one-way street only in the opposite direction. And I sent some feedback back to Copilot, so I'm not sure if that was 100% fixed right now uh, because that was coming out of the parking lot. It wanted me to make a right, but I can only turn left because that was uh, one way only. But other than that, I'd say definitely give this application a try. And if you guys are uh, in need of an offline GPS application in another country, I mean, Copilot does have some options right there. I might be able to leave uh, down links to those in the description, and if I can, you know, I'll definitely give those uh, a shoot as well and specify uh, what area th that's for. Other than that, guys, thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe, rate, comment. Uh, also, check out the description below for my social media links, Twitter, Instagram. So that's it. I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care, everybody.